boys and girls, Alex here. For the last couple of weeks I've been quite busy playing this stupid game uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and any of you that have played it you'll know what I mean and those of you that haven't, um, well you don't know what you're missing out on. But anyway, while Santa was on his way down to the pub he decided to pop in and pay me a visit and he gave me an early Christmas present which was this uh, smartwatch. Now it comes with its own cradle and all that and uh, oh, pardon me for the camera but you'll find it well not easily but it can get knocked down it's sitting there loose and all that so I thought damn it I'll do something about it and make a cradle for it. Initially I made this cradle for it which will let me to attach the base itself to the side of my uh, work, um, not workbench, my desk. However, I then suddenly realised that now that it's screwed on, if I ever want to take the cradle with me on a trip or whatever, I can't actually remove it. So I had to make something else for it, and this is the, pr uh, the new one that I've come up with. Here we are in SketchUp. Uh, this is the actual uh, cradle holder the wall mount, the two units together, a quick peekaboo so you can actually see inside it and uh, rotate it and check out where it is and this is what gets sent to the laser. That's it for this part. And off to the laser for a couple of quick cuts. This is uh, the 6mm MDF cut which uh, just popped out, as you can see. And just some boring activity of the 3mm MDF being cut, probably out of focus because it's focusing on the glass. So I'll cut it out now. As in, stop filming. Now this is the result of the 3mm MDF after about uh, a minute and a half of uh, laser cutting. Off to the workshop now. And I cut a second wall mount out just in case, you know, you might want to have the wall it mounted on two different walls. Not at the same time, of course, you know what I mean. Down in the workshop, what we are now faced with is uh, one sort of uh, cradle for the watch, watch charger and two uh, wall mounts. The next step is to actually assemble or glue and assemble it uh, with dowels in these uh, alignment holes. We shall go into that next. Okay, the next step is to cut out 12 dowels to hold these little pieces together. I use my little measuring gizmo which is set at 10 mil just for the hell of it. Put it in there, mark it off. Slap it into my gouge, which is all my guide, which has already been set up. Notice there's a little bit out here, I don't know whether you can see it or not, out the back, which is designed, you can just see it right there, which is really just designed to stop this dial from rolling off the table. Get the saw and start cutting. I need 12 of these, so I'm not going to bore you through the next 11. Be glad I didn't put you through the next 11 because I dropped a couple of them and it took me about half an hour to find them on the floor. Then it's just a matter of just giving it a quick round over with some sandpaper. Again, I'll spare you the hassle of the next 11. I should have used my calculator. I finished up cutting 13 of these dowels and rather than glue this back on there, for later use. I thought I'd keep it. I put it aside just in case somebody wants me to make one of these gadgets for them and that way I only have to cut 11 of these instead of uh, the 12. Now what I have to do is cut four what is it uh, there's a six mil there three three mil which uh, works out to be six plus uh, nine is fifteen it's roughly a twenty mil down just so I can have a bit of a cut off or whatever 
Again, it's measure and cut, so I'm not going to bore you shitless with that, so I'll go ahead and do it in the background. There was nothing magical about this next step. It was really just a dry assemble by placing the dowels in the appropriate holes, as you can see, and then slipping the pieces over them. So, what we finished up with this, as I said, dry fit, no glue. Tested it for fit. Now you'll notice this slides in quite easily. However, one of the things I did notice, this is actually my, another one I made actually for this video demo, so I've already made one, is that it's such a tight fit that because of this gap here, the actual cradle pushes this out, which makes this a very, very tight fit. Now I've got one of two choices, I can either sand that down or sand this out with uh, a rotary sander. Um, or alternatively I could have made this hole about 0.5mm narrow in diameter. They're the options available. Look, I'm not going to sand that out because this circle is about 1mm in diameter greater so that it's got a, enough lip that if the cradle fits in there loosely, it won't pop out. Um, you know, just one of those crazy little designs that I actually come up with. By the way, this channel there is designed to take the USB cable, so when you put it in, you can slap it in there. Now, as I said, the whole thing about this design is you make two of these cradles, you can mount it on one wall in one room, and another wall in another room, or if you have a different residence at your mistress's, mistress's house, or your boyfriend's house, or whichever one you might happen to be at where you want to take it. But you do have to then take this piece with you, but bear in mind that the charging cradle is already jammed in there. It's no problem to take this with it and just have these units permanently mounted. Okay, I'm going to glue them up, there's no magic into gluing and the next step will be cleaning and polishing and all that. I'll come back to you then. For the base, I'll, I'll just go through a quick way that I do do the glue up. Um, I don't see why I need to. You'll notice that the dowels are in there because of the laser cut the laser doesn't cut a perfect circle, it cu cuts it in segments and it's a 24 segmented circle and you'll find that a 4mm hole and a 4mm dowel gives you a very very good friction fit. That just by the way. Now just a very small squeeze of glue. Try to keep it away from the inside edge because that's going to be where the runner is. Now what I do is I use, put it on both sides, although it can get a bit messy, but that way I minimise handling. I do spread to the outside, it's easier to clean up, squeeze out on the outside, because it's virtually, imp it'll be impossible to clean it up on the inside. Make sure there's no potential inside squeeze out again, and here I am, with glue on my finger holding the inside edge. Terrific, you know, great example for the little ones. Because they're the ones that are going to get all this shit all over your wall. Okay, now, wipe it off. Sorry, I hope you can see all this. Um, get that off there. Jesus Christ, I... As I said before, I hate being the cameraman and the actor in this. Now, let's get this oriented the right way. That should slip on there quite easily. Just make sure there's none on the inside. Now get one of these bigger ones. That'll then eventually form the lip and guide it on. And there it is. Clean up any squeeze out on the outside. Not that you need to because that will probably be cleaned off later. Um, but just make sure that there's no real visible squeeze out on the inside. Because that's going to affect the movement on the runner. And I can see there already is. So let's try and 
get rid of that very scientific way of using it on itself sort of like cannibalism all right the other ones are saying the rest of them are going to be the same so rather than waste footage i'll switch the camera off now as they say you can't have enough clamps for a small project like this i wouldn't use clamps but unfortunately it's just a habit i got into and it's hard to get out of um so i use the clamps and fortunately as i said i've got enough of these small clamps if i've in fact I've got a bucket load of them. Now it's just a matter of waiting about 30 minutes till the glue dries and then we can go on to the cleanup. For those that have followed my uh, exploits uh, I can at least now go back to Red Dead, Re Red Dead Redemption 2 for about another hour or so. Catch you later. Got it all glued up. Um, relatively dry actually it took me a while to get away from RDR2 as we're just about to rub a stage coat stage coach however anyway I did manage to drag myself away they're glued up fit together it's a tight fit might need a little bit of sanding however when you as I said because of this gap here when you push that in as you can see it's a quite a reasonable friction fit it spreads that out enough that it doesn't fit properly so maybe if I just sand those corners down a smidge that'll get it in there however I think I'll still have to do a bit of tidy up there it's very tight so what I'm going to do is clean that up with a scraper, that with a bit of sandpaper. Um, all right, look, we'll go along and I'll set up the camera at uh, where I do this work and we'll continue from there. Okay, here I am now removing the little nibs of pokey out there with a flush cut saw. No, nothing magical there. A uh, bit of a, where is it, sand, sand touch up, 180 and 240. Now, yeah. Now what I'll do is I'll prefer to trim this up, move that, I prefer to trim this up rather than work on there, only because uh, there's two of these and only one of these. So, I'll probably be blocking the view, get out the scraper, and yeah, I'll try and... Just free that up a little bit. I'm concentrating on the low, lower piece of MDF, and then, oh damn, hang on, I can't get it. A little bit of sandpaper mounted on a bit of wood. Just to tidy it up a bit, flatten that out, just a fraction, flip it over, and then I'll also give the running edge a bit of a scrape and a sand. Same on the other side. see how it that fits now should fit much better does however the other thing is 
the bottom probably could do a bit of sanding to make it thinner. Where's the other sandpaper? Here it is. I don't want to overdo this. There. Now once that gets polished up, that should work better. I'll go and get the gizmo and try it with that. See if that still slides in smoothly. No. no it's still a bit tight. As you can see it's uh, doesn't want to go. So I've got to do a bit more work and as I said rather than mucking about because it's just going to be fine-tuned trial and error um, I'll switch the camera off. Right, the next step is uh, over to the belt sander here um, to tidy up some of these uh, burn marks. And uh, I won't do much talking because you won't hear me over the dusty. And uh, that's it. So let's go to it. Step is to countersink these wall mounting holes so the screws don't uh, protrude. And the final part is to buff it up on the buffer. So I'll see what I can do with regards to videos for that. Okay, to countersink the holes, basically all I'm going to do is use a special countersink bit on the drill press. I've got a on-off foot switch. I'm just going to wing this by eye. Oh, hell. Hang on. Just to make sure that they will accommodate these screws maybe a little bit further down. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I keep forgetting. Uh, okay, uh, now the other one. I didn't actually set this up too well because I do dig into it a little bit there. But damn, who gives who gives a toss about that? Now let's try the screws on the. Oh, hang on, I'll switch. This off foot powered remote control there, and that'll do it. That'll do me. And now over to the oh, before I do, I might round over some of these corners. Now I have this uh, Ryobi cordless drill uh, mounted with a 3D printed hood for dust extraction. I'm going to use that to round over some of these bits now. This bit, hang on, I'll just make sure I get it right. This bit here, I'll have to do freehand, only because I can't, the guide bit, bit will dip in there and screw it all up. Um, other than that, I'll switch the, sorry, because I'll have the dusty going, you won't, I'll try not to speak too much, because uh, that makes enough noise for me. So here we go, hang on, I'll get that other bit, where the hell is that other bit? Back, hell at times I do more chasing bits and pieces 
uh, that I put down and can't remember where I put it in actual work. Okay, here we go. This goes on. Dusty. Wasn't that spectacular? I might round these corners off by hand, um, and that's it. Okay, we've made it to the buffer. Um, here on this buffing wheel, it's a slow speed bench grinder. I've got uh, Tripoli e, uh, white diamond. And on the lathe, I've got that mounted with the wax. So, without further ado, I'll do one. And uh, then I'll switch it off because, I mean, it's bullshit watching me just do this. So, on comes that. It's not that loud. Put a bit of triple E on it. And off we go. The only thing I've got to be careful of about here is that I don't catch an edge because that wheel will fling it away even on this slow speed grinder. When I used to have a high speed grinder or used a high speed grinder, it used to go everywhere. I just about lost 20 of my fingers at one stage. And don't forget to polish the bottom of it because that's the bit that's going to slide and provide the greatest bloody friction. And again, be careful here because you can quite easily catch that lip and have, have it flinging. So I've got it on a very tight grip on it and that's it. Now you'll probably find I don't know how well this looks up. It's come up really well, well and truly polished. Um, not much work, not much effort, and that just about raises uh, the grit quality a couple of hundred, maybe and up to about a thousand from 240. So there you have it. Okay, uh, camera off, and uh, I'll finish the job. At the white diamond, just as a matter of interest, I probably should have polished up that bottom piece. However, I, I'm always hesitant because if I do polish it up, then I might just not be able to glue it up properly. However, probably if I use super glue, it wouldn't be an issue because naturally I just can't get into those corners. But anyway, that's just by the way. And finally, a touch of Canuba wax on the lathe. I only use a small wheel. Charge it up with the wax and again, the same old story polish turn and just make sure it doesn't get thrown out of your hand oh, nearly did, caught an edge it's like skiing, catch an edge and you're gone I don't spend much time on it um, maybe I should, I don't know but uh, this is the method I've used and it's done me reasonably well. One good thing about doing this type of lathe work, I don't have to turn the dusty on. However, having said that, all this bloody fluff everywhere, um, I usually come up upstairs and looking like Santa Claus. Anyway, this is off now because I'll do the other two. Oh, where's that button? Okay, now for the acid test. Back here at the workbench. 
is the little gizmo that's just covered in bloody dust now, sawdust. Let's put it on. This little unit should fit straight over it. As you can see, it's a very snug friction fit. And for the acid test, slides in relatively easy with a bit of move, you know, luck it'll slide in better because bear in mind at, uh, MDF is not subject. Oh, that one slides in beautifully. And we do want it a little bit tight because bear in mind once this is mounted to a workbench or tabletop or a wardrobe or the back of your head if you like, you know, I mean, I don't know, uh, should work okay. Let's take it upstairs. Okay, here we are back in the office. You may have noticed I've already screwed on the wall mount. I wasn't going to bore you to tears with screwing. I'm sure everybody knows how to screw, except maybe the Pope, and I'm sure he won't be watching this video. So let's give it a try. Here's a wall mount. Oh, the cradle, I should say. Let's try the cradle holder. Seat it down fully. Make sure... It's in all the way, because that's what might stop this from working properly. Slip it in. Beautiful. Plug the USB dongle in. And set the watch down. There you are, look at that. 100% charged, goes to prove that I haven't been doing my chin-ups and push-ups recently. Anyway, you can sit there and watch the watch or whatever. I hope this gives people some ideas. Um, again, another useless video, but still, somebody might get some sort of a clue from it. And now back to RDR2 to rob a bank. Hi-ho, silver away!